So in this video, we're gonna be testing out the Swamp Green Water Gel from AK Interactive. Now with this stuff, it's one piece, straight out of the tub, but how good is it gonna be? Well, today, we are gonna put it through its paces, and let's find out. Now before we get going, just for the record, this is not a sponsored video. I bought this product myself, and we're now gonna test it out together. If it turns out as good as it looks, then if you want to give it a go for yourself, there'll be some links down in the description. They are affiliate links, which means if you do buy something, we get a little bit of commission. But neither Ben or I will ever recommend something that we don't use ourselves, or we would not feel comfortable recommending it to you guys. So it's down there if you want it. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's go play some goop. There's quite a wide range of water effects you can get. Commonly, people often say that the two-part resins are the best, but they can be really fiddly and messy. And, if, and sometimes if you don't get the, the right ratio between the two parts of the, of the resin, then it doesn't set and you've basically ruined your model. Whereas the AK Interactive water gel, at least on the tub, says it's a one piece solution. Point to note, it's an acrylic, so it'll behave differently to an oil based thing. Looking at the photos, it looks really, really realistic. Now the seller has put a really helpful stock sticker right over the instructions. But looking at the instructions online, you can either use it neat, straight out of the tub, or you can water it down slightly. So first of all, we're gonna take off the seal, unscrew this, the standard seal on top. I'm quite intrigued to see how it actually looks. That is, that is really weird. I was not expecting that. So for this test, I'm gonna use a couple of upturn bases from a Warhammer 40K set, which I've had hanging around my bits box. A few things I want to test. Now, first thing, I want to see how it levels and I want to see how it flows up against like a gradient. Now, some of these resins you see, they kind of have quite an unrealistic concave effect. So I'm going to test this by using Humble Model Filler to create like a slope, like you would get on like a riverbank, part of a diorama or a base. And I want to see how the gel flows against it and see what, if it creates like a realistic water effect where the water is like lapping against the bank. So I'm gonna do that on one of the bases. Now the next thing I wanna see is how transparent it is once it's dry. So I'm gonna paint both bases in three different colors. So a dark brown, like a sandy yellow, and a, a very light tan. So having done both bases like that, so one of them has got the slope gradient from the putty, remember? Now it does say you get a better result if you do it in thin layers. So one of these, I'm gonna use it straight out of the tub, neat. I want to see how that works. So for this one, I'm going to use, just use an old brush and almost paint it on. Now the consistency is like a, a moussey gel and it does kind of sit where you, where you put it. Now for the other one, I want to see it water down slightly. So I'm going to put some water in this lid and uh, put it in and mix it in. drop it in there. Now this dilution, it does need a little bit of help just to flow around at places. It'd be interested to see how it dries and see if it self levels. Right, so having let that dry, that was interesting, is having a look at the dregs in the cap, which we mixed it in, very, very fine layer, it's got quite an interesting result. So this is the one we diluted down a bit. Now you can see it's a little bit, it's still a little bit wet, it hasn't dried completely in the center there. But looking at it, for the first layer, it's also leveled quite nicely. Ah, this is interesting. So this is the one we kind of, we put in neat and kind of dabbed it in, and it's a lot rougher surface. So I'll mix up a second batch to do, to put a next layer in. And looking at how much you use, especially if you dilute it down, this tub would last you ages. So I'm trying to dilute it down so it's like a, to a paint-like consistency rather than having like a gel. I'm thinking that might self-level a bit easier.
So I'm also giving the bases a tap and also using the tool as well to pop any of the major bubbles that you can see. Interesting, the water line at the moment is not doing that concave thing. It's, it seems to be quite level. So we'll see how it dries. Right, so I've left it to dry overnight. Now this one is the beach, essentially. And there's a little bit of undulation in there, but it's fairly smooth. It is very glossy. I guess you could use, use some satin varnish, for example, to take that shine down a little bit. But also on this, where I've pushed up against the round bits in the middle, it's got that slight concave lip to it. But against the beach, that's pretty good. That's quite smooth. Uh, that's quite a smooth transition, like water going against the beach. Whilst it's not glass-like, it is still quite smooth. It has self-leveled fairly well. Um, but it hasn't cured quite completely yet, because you can make marks in it. But also, noticed there was a bubble there that I missed, and there's left like a bubble on the surface, which might actually look quite good from a diorama point of view. Now, going up, this is the one where we, we kind of spooned it in. Now, it's just a lot more wavy on top. So if, you, so if you're looking for a rougher surface, then I would say use it neat. But if you're looking for a smooth surface, then oh yeah, I'll definitely water it down to get that self-leveling and nice smooth result. Also, the concave bit is a lot more evident when you're using it neat. And to my mind, you get a much more realistic result if you water it down. So one final test I wanted to try and do is that with other products, you can put a fine layer on top and then almost use an airbrush to try and create waves or, or, or little um, ripples in the water. So I'll try it on this one first of all and see how that works. This one I'm going to try a slightly different approach and I'm going to use the gel and almost sculpt in the ripples on the surface and see how that works. Okay, so I've let that dry, and this one was the one where we kind of sculpted it on top. And I quite like that. It's quite a subtle effect, but it is a super quick and easy way of putting ripples, especially if you have like either a pontoon or you've got somebody stepping into water. You can sculpt that quite easily. And I just thought, now whilst they are there, they are very subtle and you can't see it very easily unless you get the light to catch it right. But this is an acrylic based product. I wonder if I can paint on it. So I'm, I'm using standard green uh, paint from Vallejo and just very simply paint those ripples. And that's literally taken about two seconds, two or three seconds. I've done, done nothing special with it. And yeah, you could go further with it if you wanted to, but for something that quick and easy, I'm quite impressed with that, I quite like that. And my brain is currently whirring with all the ideas and ways I could use this from basing to dioramas and maybe some other ideas as well. Now remember, if you want to check this out for yourself, I've put a link down in the description for you. So if you've enjoyed this test today, please bash that like button, and also please share it with any of your friends or any other modeling groups who might find it useful.